Myanmar was until recently a closed country or society strictly controlled by a military junta and somewhat surprising the regime has changed, is changing and it appears that there is a genuine commitment to open up higher education as well. This is a situation of a country that is opening up after decades of totalitarianism, so it is very much something that interests us as a university dedicated to open society and democracy and how to support the development of open society and democracy. And it is also interesting for us because it is in a way similar to the situation in this part of the world after the fall of the communist regime when you know we have witnessed and perhaps influenced to some extent, to small extent, the transition from totalitarianism to democracy. So there are similarities and opportunities which are very interesting for CU considering the type of universities that we are. Going to that from transition period and going to the consolidated democracy and then uh, transform to the uh, closed society, to the open society. In that period, uh, the changing of the uh, people mindset it important. To change the people mindset, the educating the people is also important. Education is very important. Education is very powerful to transform the society. Just in our Myanmar sayings, education is like light. Young leaders in every society and change makers come from universities. They are university students, they are professors who are engaged with, with social interaction, with social development, very often with political development. In Myanmar in particular, the University of Rangoon, currently known as the University of Yangon, has historically been the site of political change. All the big student protests started at the University of Rangoon and whenever you visit campus one of the sites which you will be visiting is a tree in the shape of a fist which is typically traditionally associated with, with the student protests of the 20th century. The faculty seminars in international relations that took place at the University of Mandalay in October-November were the first part of a conversation and of a partnership that is taking place between Central European University and the Departments of International Relations at Yangon University and Mandalay University. Colleagues from CEU have been several times by now to Myanmar and they have organized workshops with faculty members in Yangon and also in Mandalay in legal studies and international uh, relations, discussing about how graduate studies in these disciplines are organized in the, in the world, how do we do it here. So these have been two, three week long workshops, very well received by colleagues, faculty members in Myanmar. This is the first major group of academics from the state sector of higher education in Myanmar to travel abroad on an extended academic capacity building visit. And for us, the organization that facilitated, that created this opportunity to them, it was, it was an easy answer where this first group uh, should be brought to, CEU. We brought these seven fellows here for three months for an academic semester with two purposes. One purpose was to allow each of them individually to pursue their research agendas in collaboration with scholars at CU, with the access to excellent resources that CU has to offer. But on the other hand, there are also tremendous needs in Myanmar in developing new content of teaching, new courses, new academic programs, new curricula for the subjects that never existed or that were banned for several decades as Burma was under the totalitarian rule. I have come over here for two goals. One is for doing my own research and another one is for cost development. I'm sure the insights gained here will be applicable to our uh, educational context in Myanmar. 
in CU, I have a chance to interview CU faculty members uh, for their perceptions of research, how they work with their MA students, PhD students, the way they supervise. I think it is possible to identify ways and means to get teacher educators in Myanmar involved in research activities and put their research findings into beneficial use. We showed them how they can uh, utilize several online resources to monitor the uh, scientific literature and we showed them how to use uh, citation alerts, research alerts, RSS feeds and so on. By using the remote access options they can use these resources in their home, in the dormitory or in pubs. For doing research, now Open Society Foundation with the help of OSF, Yangon University Library has uh, become to upgrade the e-library. And then for we have e-library, the students and the faculty are very beneficial for us to get uh, the e-resources from that e-library. According to my collaboration with uh, Haiyan University, sponsored by Koika, so I can establish Myanmar Korea Local Knowledge Center. And then in my university, now we can uh, rent online library. Open society is a characteristic or a significant of democratization. So, in, transition, in, in transitional period, research and higher education are very, very important. Good higher education can produce good research. Currently, I'm doing research in democratization in Myanmar. For this research, I need a lot of advice and support from some researchers from CU. When I had a workshop with scholars in Myanmar, I had a lot of a curiosity and started to think about the you know, research questions. And a lot of people are talking about this transition, democratic transformation or transition in Myanmar, but I haven't seen some in-depth research on it. Because from my side, I can do research, probably on my own, visiting a number of times in Myanmar, but I don't think I can get thick descriptive research from inside of the people. So with Mimiji's insights, I'm pretty sure our work can be much better. Myanmar is truly at the crossroads today. And there is tremendous expectation of the new role that the universities and the individual scholars can play there. The difficulty is, of course, that the universities or the individual scholars are not necessarily prepared to play this role. There are constraints that they feel as the legacy of the old system. There are constraints on individual self-expression. So they really need exposure and they need patient but intensive input, feedback and collaborative hand of the colleagues abroad. And this is, I think, what we are trying to achieve with this fellowship. This is a very small drop in a very large sea of, uh, of higher education. Uh, Myanmar is a very, very large country, so what the CU can contribute is in a way small, but we can see already some, some results which uh, gives us optimism that this process of transformation reform in Myanmar will continue and we can make a small contribution to it. What we want to work with is a team of local faculty that then go out work individually with colleagues, with students, on particular projects. And then, of course, our teachers too, and their instructors, and as a result, they share what they've learned. But then there is really a, a synergy between the two. Then teaching and research become two faces of the same coin. And there's a constant dialogue between the two. I realized that how to construct a syllabus, how to link between the outcomes of uh, student learning and teacher's assessment. To have an open mind and to have the open living, to, to, to become an open society, it is very important of the role of education. Without knowing the emerging trends in education, we educators cannot create the society's openness to new ideas and diversity. So that's why it can guarantee high quality educational system in this 
open society. Central European University is very useful and very good experience for us. It's for the for not only for the present but also for the future life.